Well, good morning, everyone. It's morning coffee. It's uh, RVN Television. I'm Joe Osmendi, your host. And today, again, we're going to um, be on the expert series uh, sponsored by WorkCred. And we have a real, another real special guest from uh, the expert series today. Uh, Roy Swift is going to be honest with us uh, with, as executive director. And also will be uh, Nick Soda from the Construction Management Association of America. Gentlemen, welcome to uh, the expert series on morning coffee. Good morning. Hi. We're happy to be here today. You know, this is a really important time uh, in workforce when things are changing so and uh, people are trying to decide what to do with their lives, how to reskill, upskill, right. uh, new profession, uh, this sort of thing. And uh, today, I think, will be another example of how industry certifications can be uh, a fix uh, for a lot of people in a short-term uh, uh, manner uh, and produce jobs uh, that have a good living wage. And so uh, I'm excited about uh, uh, another individual who has, is heading up a, a, a great group of certifications that he's going to tell you about today mm -hmm. uh, and how that can help lots of people. Okay, good. And Roy, why don't you quickly open the show again with um, reminding my viewers exactly what WorkCred's all about. Uh, uh, pardon, I didn't oh. hear that, Joe. Oh, I said, why don't we open the show by, by reminding my, my viewers exactly what WorkCred does and what you're all about? Can you hear me? The... Well, basically, uh, you know, one of the things that, that we feel uh, about uh, the certifications, and, and, and Nick uh, is going to uh, tell you about his uh, particular uh, certifications, right. which uh, have a lot of uh, application uh, uh, in, in various industries, uh, uh, really. And so, uh, Nick, why don't you tell them about uh, your certifications? Sure. I'm, and you, uh, a little bit about yourself and, organiz and the organization. I'm happy to do so, Roy. I think Joe was asking you, though, to uh, introduce WorkCred. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was having connection to okay. difficulties here. <laughs> uh, WorkCred is designed to look at the quality, market value, and effectiveness of workforce mm -hmm. uh, uh, credentials. And we uh, are uh, looking at how... Uh, frankly, that uh, these non-degree types of credentials can help people immediately get good jobs and uh, help them have a living wage. We're also looking at how these types of certifications can be embedded into degree pathways, which actually enhances a lot of various degrees. Uh, even a liberal arts major, you know, majoring in history or philosophy or English or uh, thing, and then adding some digital skills uh, to this uh, t type of degree, um, we think will enhance outcomes uh, uh, for people and uh, still allow them to acquire uh, their interest and be able to work in their uh, area of interest. Uh, but have additional skills that will make them more employable. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, Nick, let, let's talk about uh, the CMAA right now. Why don't you give my viewers, first of all, your background, and then talk about the purpose of the CMAA. Uh, I appreciate you having me here, Joe. Uh, Roy, always good to see you. Uh, so CMAA is a nonprofit formed in 1982 for the construction management profession. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working in credentialing for a long time. I've uh, worked uh, probably more than I want to admit in credentialing. Uh, I've worked for the Entomological Society of America as well as Infocom International, which is now known as Avixa, and they certified the AV professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I've been with uh, CMA here for almost 13 years, uh, certifying construction managers. Great. You know, um, you, we, we talk about the certifications and, and everything like that. Uh, what I think the CMA has two uh, certifications available, or, or membership at least, and that's in a corporate and individual. Can you, can you identify both those um, people that can sure. join? Sure. We actually have a, an interesting structure we've actually expanded on over the past couple of years. And we have uh, all the way from entry level, where it's basic foundational knowledge and skills that are being identified, all the way through expert. And so 
we have what's called our construction manager and training program, mm-hmm. and then that uh, we introduced stackable credentials to uh, beyond that, so people could continue to build upon those skills. And then uh, this past year, we released the certified associate construction manager credential. And then uh, what we've had since 1996 is the certified credential uh, for construction managers. So that is our pinnacle credential. It is one that requires the most experience and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we have a pathway through credentialing for really for anybody who has a degree to somebody who may not even have a degree to have at any point in their career a, a chance to become a professional construction manager. Most of the time, people think of construction and they're thinking, oh, these are people who are out there with a shovel and digging in the dirt. But there's actually a professional side to this, and that's what the construction managers do. So this is an opportunity to take somebody who may have been in the field and uh, working in the trades to moving uh, up through the professional route in the construction industry. Right. You know, Nick, there was... I think that is the, Joe, that's the real misconception about uh, construction, and that's why... You know, even if somebody has a master's degree or even a PhD, sometimes those types of individuals go back and and uh, will take on a managerial uh, types of uh, of occupations uh, that they know uh, where they're able to get where their degree may be in an area where uh, jobs are not that available in this way. And we know the construction industry is booming mm-hmm. these days uh, and uh, there's always going to be a role in construction for people. And well, if you don't mind, I'm going to enlighten the audience to what a construction manager is Mm -hmm. because a lot of people think okay this is probably somebody who's just a general contractor coming to my house to manage the reno on my kitchen well that's not accurate they could be a construction manager but the members that are from the association uh, that I'm worked with are tr- traditionally infrastructure. So you're talking about the people who are building your bridges, your hospitals, uh, the the Sea Aquarium in Miami to the Las Vegas Stadium for the Raiders, uh, it's people who helped widen the Panama Canal. These are massive in- infrastructure projects. So as Roy said, construction is not going away. It's never going to go away. We're constantly going to be building the infrastructure of this country. So there's always job stability as far around as construction. Uh, so that's the big thing for us is trying to get more people interested in uh, becoming construction managers and managing these large scale billion dollar projects. Uh, you know, it could be the schools that your kids go to. It could be the colleges that they want to attend or it could be the government facility or the Virginia Department of Transportation, you know, building the roads and highways and everyday things that we have to deal with and do uh, is really critical to everything uh, that uh the construction industry needs to manage from here on out. That's from soup to that's is what a construction manager manages from hiring the general contractor or the subcontractors and managing that for the the government entity that's running those projects or the private entity. So it may be Amazon building a data center, uh, but it, you know they've got to manage that from everything to knowing how much the budget is, when this should I start. The ground, breaking the ground and, you know, procurement and buying all the products that go involved with that and managing when each aspect needs to be done. That's what a construction manager does. So it is integral to the infrastructure of this country and around the world. You know, I'm so glad you brought that up because the, the perception of the construction industry is like you said, the general contractor would come into your house or else somebody is, you know, pounding nails or something like that. And, and the whole thing is there are such opportunities on, on, a, on a major scale, because you're talking about billions of dollars that have to be that have to be managed, and it has to be managed by professionals that know what they're doing, and I think that's a perception that y- your organizations like yours are are changing for the for the average person. Yeah, and, and it really is. And the important thing here, as we think about credentials, is that yes, there are degrees in construction management, but mm-hmm. somebody who could have been a roofer and started their career out of that and came out of high school, or maybe didn't even get a chance to finish high school, has an opportunity to move up into the professional series of construction management where they're actually managing that entire roofing project or moving on from roofing. Uh, it could be anything. It, you see certifications in crane operators or you see uh, certified financial uh, construction managers uh, who are managing the finances aspect of it. There are all, all these different types of credentials, you know, guarantee the kind of person that you're getting when you hire them is basically wearing that resume on your shoulder of, hey, I have this knowledge and expertise. I may not have that degree, but I've learned that over a period of time. I've been tested on it. I've taken courses or uh, did various things to prepare for this and 
because of recertification, you're required to renew it and maintain it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a degree that I could have earned, which like, uh, you know, a business management degree that earned 25 years ago that I have done nothing to maintain it, you know, while it's still valuable, a certification is going to say that this person has had to maintain it over a period of time and stay up with industry best practices and knowledge. So it's very valuable and to know that these certification programs are verifying the person that's building the bridge that you have to drive over to get to work every day exactly. is done properly. Well, that is so We're important. seeing a great deal of transition of people to new jobs these days, having to move to areas such as concern. I believe uh, it, there was a 25% increase and people transitioning to new things over the last three years more than uh, what has originally happened, which means people are having to search for the reskilling and upskilling to industries where there are particular uh, occupations uh, uh, in this regard. And they think now another uh, 12 million people will be searching to do that. And because of the technology and uh, uh, and particularly in, uh, in, in areas of food uh, and retail uh, are areas where uh, we're seeing massive transitions uh, of trying to uh, look at ways in which to uh, sort of meet with the times and be able to get that good wage uh, and a respectable job. Yeah, one of the things that we, we do a salary survey as the association for our members every five years. Uh, we did one a little close to this time to, from before COVID to after COVID to see how things changed. And one of the things that struck me was that 34% of people are planning to retire within the next 10 years in the construction industry. That's a massive amount of people that need are, are, is going to leave a really big hole for wow. the infrastructure of this country if we don't get this filled. And the thing about salaries for the construction managers is that there's most people in the construction industry have some sort of certification or license. And the ones that do make 10% more than those who do not. And so there's an opportunity for somebody who wants to be in construction management, look at that as their long-term career or migrate into that eventually, is, you know, the average pay scale is anywhere from 130 to $200,000, not including billable time on projects, which can add up a lot more. So this is one of those careers that even if you didn't graduate in college, you can be, it can be lucrative for you and, and really help uh, support the infrastructure of the country. Well, that is so important because, you know, one of the things we always talk about in the, in the expert series and credentialing and certifications is the fact of time and money that it costs to get a, a traditional degree, let's say, uh, bachelor's or what have you. And that doesn't necessarily translate into a, um, into a high-paying job or something that's doing something for the country. Where construction management is something I think that people don't think about, but it's essential. As you said, there's plenty of openings in, in, the, in the future because people are retiring, and, and it's lucrative. So I think, I think I, this is one of the things I love to have about my show is the fact that the expert series points this out for people to understand. Nick? Yeah, it, you know, there, there's so many opportunities for, right. con, you know, people in this construction industry. Mm -hmm. The biggest issue that we see around almost all work industries right now is right. the future workforce. So this is the opportunity and to be able to get into uh, a paying job. I know the Los Angeles Unified School District uh, about five years ago when we first did this in 2018, we're hiring uh, what we have our construction manager in training that I mentioned earlier at $75,000 a year. That's starting pay right. with, if you had that credential with, you know, uh, they're going to issue you a cell phone and everything too. So coming out of school or even, you know, just having that credential, you know, that's a huge opportunity to start at a really good salary, you know, over there in Southern California, where things can be a little bit more expensive. So, you know, we see that across the country and opportunities like that uh, going and you'll see uh, requests on proposals to build these massive infrastructure projects and be a part of something really cool and make good money on it. So these are the opportunities that we see coming and uh, the things that we struggle with the most. And that's what the association is here for is to really help with identifying the credentials that may be able to help people within their career. And there's so many other associations like ours around this in the construction industry. So from architecture to engineering to construction. So all of these different licenses and certifications, they're, they're only going to benefit uh, the general public. 
for safety reasons and for uh, the cost of living for themselves. And that's why also we look for uh, credentials that have upward mobility. In other words, some people say, oh, you can get that certification, but that's a dead end street. Right. You can't go anywhere uh, with it. Well, I think Nick has alluded to the fact that there is a great deal of stacking of credentials in the construction industry that allows people to have upper mobility and, and build those bigger salaries, uh, uh, if you will. But it also allows people who may not have as many skills as needed for the upper ones to enter into the industry so that they're in and then they learn through a lot of the, sometimes a formal apprenticeship programs, sometimes informal uh, kind of thing, or, or uh, continuing ed courses uh, uh, in, in that regard too. Um, but it allows people to get into the industry to be able to do that upward mobility. Sometimes professions have such a high level for entry that you can't even get in. And, and this is an example where uh, that's not true, I think, right, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the big initiatives that's near and dear to my heart is we also, as an association, look at the military as an uh, opportunity for both bringing the skills into the military so they understand the standards that right. people are using to build projects and manage projects because they have to build things on the fly. But more so is for them to also transition out. So for active duty and reserves uh, for, and National Guard, CMA makes some of these credentials absolutely free. Mm -hmm. uh, because we want to encourage them to one, come into the industry and to two, bring those standards into the practices that they're doing when they're in a rush to make these things happen uh, uh, on a dime. You know, when the pandemic hit, a lot of people lost their jobs, et cetera, and they had to transition to um, different, different industries, let's say. Do you see a lot of that transition, Nick, into the construction industry? Mm -hmm. In construction, we did see some of that, but in the construction management profession, we didn't get to see as much of that as we'd like. Okay. Uh, the good news is that we didn't also see any downturn of you know, loss of funds for projects. We saw more because okay. uh, there's an infrastructure bill that got passed. So mm -hmm. there's actually more opportunities, and we were hoping more people would transition because of that, and there's still a lot more opportunities. So we're hoping, being on places like this, that we'll be able to drive some people to take a peek and take some interest into uh, the infrastructure of the country. So, not as much as we'd like. Okay, but there's always room for growth. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. You know, um, let's it, talk. Let's let's talk about legislation for a minute. Could the, the association get involved with a lot of legislation? Our association, uh, because we have federal members on our uh, in, on our board and our association, we don't do any legislative activity. We do a grassroots campaign, okay. so we encourage our members to talk uh, to their their congressmen uh, and tell them the things that may matter and may not matter. And we do have that advocacy page, but we have uh, other associations that we also uh, do coalitions with and uh, let them do some of the charge, like the uh, uh, American Society of uh, Military Engineers and the. Uh, uh, AGC, the General Contractors Association, they have a lot of more advocacy type of things that they do for legislative purposes, but our association tries to stick to the grassroots campaigns. Would you like to go into, I, I think there's two kinds of memberships too, aren't there? Corporate memberships and individual memberships. Could you go into those for me? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of members. So we have over 21,000 members uh, of our association. Some are uh, individual practitioners uh, who, you know, go to work every day and just want to uh, become a construction manager. So they take advantage of our opportunities to organizations being members. So we have uh, large firms like AECOM, Jacobs, the Virginia Department of Transportation, GSA, those kinds of members who uh, take advantage of owner membership or corporate uh, memberships, mm -hmm. which our membership structure, structure is so that if your company becomes a member, anyone who's at your company becomes a member of ours. Uh, but you don't have to be part of one of these huge members so you can get it at a lower rate. But membership isn't required for credentialing. So you could become a credential holder without having to be a member of CMAA. The, the benefit is going to be that you get access to some of the education and training at, at discount rates and for free in mm -hmm. some cases because uh, we do bi-weekly webinars, things like that, um, and do some online training that you would have access to in part of that membership cost. Um, but the true value is really being able to obtain those 
credentials because uh, some of our certificate programs come with credentials as well. Um, it includes training, and those are the ones that really can help benefit the individual. Uh, but our membership, you can take and join without having a certification and mm -hmm. start taking some of that training and understanding some of those things. And we do have different cost structure for those who can't afford a full company membership. This is really uh, an important, I think, arena for uh, high school kids who just don't know what they want to do and uh, uh, may have uh, some uh, mechanical skills and f physical skills and uh, uh, it, it, it can be a real bridge uh, to doing it. Unfortunately, a lot of times our counselors in the high school do not know as much about these areas as we would like for them to because a lot of people could have very successful careers but they just don't know about it uh, and certainly their association tries to do as much marketing as possible but we really in this country need the help of counselors um, in the high school to be much more aware of what are some of the successful career pathways uh, uh, in, in this in this regard, and uh, this probably goes back to looking at how we educate uh, high school counselors and career counselors. Yeah, I think that goes back to what I was saying earlier about some of the ideals that most people think of construction as. You mm -hmm. know, my my feet are going to be in the dirt every day, and mm -hmm. you know, I, that's not a real career for you know my kid. I want them to grow up to be doctors and lawyers because that's the stigma that's been put around there. Is that's where you make the money. That's that's a professional job. Uh, but I can tell you, our members, you know, in construction management, they you know nine times out of ten they're going to work in a suit. Um, sometimes they go to the trailer, sometimes they're on job site, particularly earlier in their career. Uh, you know, they're, wor they're wearing the steel-toed boots, but they're, they're not out there digging. They're out there just monitoring the site to make sure the project is going according to plan and looking at the blueprints. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, the thing that I really would like to beat home to some of these counselors is that, you know, it's not about just digging holes in the ground. Right. There's other opportunities out there in construction that are professional, uh, that it really can, you know, grow up to start your own firm and to uh, aspire to manage large scale constru construction projects. I know right here in Washington, D.C., we gave an award out uh, a couple of years ago for the person who redid the Woodrow Wilson Bridge, the drawbridge. And that was a, that's a major infrastructure thing that for 495, the beltway around Washington, D.C., to make sure it continues to flow those kinds of things you know those are things that uh, I'd be very proud for my kids to be a part of and to support uh, and to make a living off of helping get that kind of stuff done for this country right. I know I know that CMA has a couple of um, major events every year could you go uh, tell my audience about that Yes, uh, we actually do two events a year uh, we had a national conference and that's where we have a bunch of people we have about uh, 13 to 1400 people come in attendance and we provide education and uh, different types of training through there. And uh, the biggest thing is the networking uh, in there uh, is where you get to meet the, the great uh, members of our association. And uh, like I said, they're, you know, our past chairs from the architect of the Capitol to the head of DFW, uh, Dallas Fort Worth uh, Airport. Uh, you know, those are the kind of people you're gonna meet at our conference and they get to have discussions with them, hear them talk, uh, network with them and get some education and training. And that, we do that one typically in the fall in October. And we do that around the country this year. It was in National Harbor in Maryland. Uh, next year it'll be in San Francisco. And uh, in the year after that, uh, it'll be in uh, uh, Las Vegas. Then we do our spring conference, which is typically geared more towards the leadership. And it is more around the, le the leaders of the industry. So you're going to get more of the owners of companies and vice presidents. Uh, and we have an emerging leaders program that we uh, have do presentations there to discuss things. And uh, that's a little bit smaller conference, three to 400 people. Uh, this year it's in Philadelphia. Uh, and uh, next year, I believe it'll be in Las Vegas as well. So. Uh, we do those things around the country, so there are various opportunities. We also have 30 regional chapters, uh, so that if people want to get involved locally so they can't afford to travel, or, the, you know, we have chapters around the country in most major metropolitan cities uh, for people to be able to attend uh, and do things either virtually or in person. Nick, it's... You know, it's so we don't talk a lot about this, uh, about joining associations, mm -hmm. but frankly... That's how a lot of people get jobs because they go to the conferences, they network and they interact. Uh, 
we don't profess and talk about that enough uh, for young people uh, because uh, we know with the the digital di digital technology of selecting people and putting the resume through a machine that the more networking and personal ways in which one can connect is the people who are going to be the most successful and then meeting other certified people uh, where exchange of ideas many times people learn more in the hallways than they do in the lectures uh, a lot of times just from the informal interactions of people and I think we are doing a disservice in our professions of not uh, talking more about that value uh, uh, because uh, people many times say, oh, they just have to pay a membership fee and I don't know what I really get out of it uh, kind of a thing. Um, but I, I think not only does the association provide the credentials and the certifications, but the opportunity really uh, uh, to network, to be able to have that successful career. Yeah, and that's another stigma that I think that we need to get over because a lot of people think they hear nonprofit association like the one I work for, and they think, oh, this is Greenpeace and this is a, or a charitable foundation type of thing. That is not what we are. We're a professional trade association, and so people come to us to learn about the trade, and that's what we're here to do is to promote the profession and to make sure that the education is going around about the profession and for those professionals. So I mentioned our Emerging Leaders Program we did a few years ago and uh, you know we started off uh, our kickoff year with you know seven people in the program. It was absolutely free uh, to them. And what we did is we spent a year teaching them things uh, about being a professional and being about the industry, things from you know being able to do presentations to uh, marketing themselves uh, as, as well as emotional intelligence and we taught them that at no cost and i'll tell you five of those seven all had new jobs by the end of this program because uh, they we put them on stage to do presentations and everyone got to hear that that's the kind of thing a professional association and trade associations in the societies uh you know that's what we're about that's the kind of things we try to do the, the stigma of nonprofit, oh these people don't make money is is also wrong uh it, we make plenty of money but what we do is that money that we make is spent back on our members so right. joining our membership is what we spend our money on is to make sure that there is a continued career here for those people in the uh, the association. Well, that's so fantastic, Nick, and I, I thank you so much for joining us on the Expert Series today. What point in the program I'd like you to look into the camera there and tell people how they can reach you and who should call you, and after Nick finishes, Roy, please do the same. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so you can reach me, you can go to the CMA website. I'm the Vice President of Professional Development, um, and my email address is uh,